Try a child. So if you want to be an artist tomorrow, I'll let you know. Don't get discouraged. You start by drawing tables and chairs. People yeah. will tell you that what are you doing? You're wasting paper, you're wasting time. But one day they are still going to come and give you a round of applause. But all you just have to do is live with it, um, turn it around for good. A stone that is meant to stop you, you can pick it up and use it as a foundation for your house. Yeah, right. So. All right, thanks so much for joining me over here. This is Zonk News, and of course, my name is Charles Sondero. Uh, joining me over here today is one of the artists from Nigeria, Abuja, and he's been making a re remarkable, rather, he's been drawing some remarkable paintings that is worth noting all the way from history. And of course, uh, he's bringing life back to the living. In other words, uh, joining me shortly, that's uh, Angelo. How are you all doing from Abuja? How are you doing? I'm good, Mr. Charles. Good afternoon. How is Kenya ah, today? Kenya is fine. How is Nigeria? Uh, Nigeria is good. Uh, as you know, we are in the um, dry season and um, everywhere seems to be hot now. So we have to go everywhere with our fans. <laughs> right. All right. That's amazing. And uh, of course, as we begin this uh, kind of an interview, I'd really like you to maybe introduce yourself, especially to those people are meeting for the very first time. Okay. Yeah, my name is Aushala Angelo. I'm uh, I'm a fine artist. Um, I've been practicing since um 2012. So this makes this makes it a decade. This year makes it a decade. I've been practicing art, mm -hmm. and I specialize more in oil paintings. And uh, my paintings focus more on the, um, the figure the figurative part of art. I mean, drawing the human figure because of the love I have and. Uh, that I, the love I have for the human figure, how it came to pass and how God has created it, the, the interesting features of the human figure, particularly. All right, so before we go deeper into you unveiling or maybe unraveling what all this painting does, how have you been able to survive, especially during the pandemic, where uh, I think it's actually affected most of the economies across the continent of Africa. So to you as an artist, how was it? Yeah, during the COVID-19, it was, it was, I think it was a dark time of our lives when we never expected. But as artists, masters of adversity, we are always prepared for anything that happens. And uh, we often take advantage of things and time, advantage of events, advantage of um, happenings. I could say for me particularly, or for people that I know, that are artists like myself, my colleagues, the pandemic period was time where we had to stay in the house to produce more of our heart and um, think how to console people, to make people feel less of the pain, less of the destruction or thoughts or negativity that was going on in the world. So during the COVID-19, it was, um, not really a good time in the whole world because I think that's one of the darkest times in our lives. Yeah. But yet, we artists, we took the advantage, myself, I took the advantage to produce art that will make people at least put smile on their faces and forget about it will still make them wear a pretty face of smile. All right, now that is actually driving me towards asking the main question now over here um, called Arts and Series. Yes, yes, Colors and Light, that's the title of the series. Um, yes. Actually, the Colors and Light is um, it's something that has been on my mind since uh, far back as 2018. I've been thinking of how to do something new. But there's a saying that there's nothing new on head. But uh, what you just have to do is um, review things that have been done to create something new. That's what creativity is all about. So I've been thinking about how to do something different not completely different, but let me just do something unique in my own style. I don't mm -hmm. just want to be a regular artist that's painting on the street or painting uh, flowers, painting, um, should I say, marketplace, scenes and everything. But I just want to do something so unique. That is why I, brought, I thought about how I can use um, lights and colors 
I actually love vibrant colors. And um, that was why I discovered the Colors and Lights um, series. And um, it was at first difficult for me trying to bring the light and the colors together because of I have to manage my space. I have to use um, uh, models. Mm -hmm. I have to pay people to pose for me. And if not, I'm paying, if I'm not paying, I have to look for someone that will be so chanced and steady to, to take time for me, to give me easier time. So I started with it. That was when I did the, the first series. Mm -hmm. The first series was in 2019. That was the first time I ever produced one with a lady, uh, a lady with a bed on her shoulder. Yes. On her shoulder, yeah. And um, from there, I did the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, those paintings, I exhibited them for uh, a paint uh, for a for an art exhibition, a group exhibition in 2019, talking yeah. about breast cancer and everything. So I was trying to introduce that into the world, but it was not giving me the feel I wanted. Mm -hmm. So in 2020, during the COVID 19, that was I could say that was when I got the breakthrough on how to under and the understanding of the color. So that was when I did the series number three with a guy angry holding a bed within him. So it was like talking about peace and struggle. When the Nigerian youth, that was during the, uh, it was related to uh, the, co uh, the COVID-19 stroke, um, the NSAS in Nigeria. Yeah. That was, uh -huh. Yes. Then that was when they were telling us this, the Nigerian youth, the bed was, the guy was holding a bed and he was aggressive like this. Ah. And he had ribbons all over him because if you have studied the paintings, there are ribbons tying the person, the face, which everything I'm going to explain today. Yes. So I did the painting in a way that the guy was holding a dove and dove represents peace, a pure white dove. The dove was mine. Okay. The dove is lit now, actually. He died. Uh, that was in 2020 as well. Sorry about so that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think that was my first model, the bed. So I had the dove, I had him hold the dove mm -hmm. and ribbons all over him. So he was struggling. Like the bed was representing peace. Yes. In his hands. While the ribbons were representing obstacles. Looking beautiful. Beautifully placed to hold you down. While he himself is struggling to survive. Now the painting is talking about the title of the painting was Peaceful Protest. Uh -huh. That was uh, series number three. Peaceful protest. And it was, the guy was like, when people asked me, I told the person that the painting is trying to talk about the Nigerian youth were giving, or should I say the use of the word generally, they are giving us, they've given us something to hold on to that. Like, let's be peaceful. Let's be calm. Yes. But yet, mm. we have a lot of things tying us down. Where did you actually get the inspiration from? I, the painting, if you look at those paintings, they have something in common about them. That's they all have dark backgrounds. Yes. Yeah. Every one of them, every piece of them are going to have dark backgrounds. Originally, I've always loved the paintings that have dark backgrounds because they tend to make you focus on the subject matter of the painting. Yes. Now, I try to study about people or time pass that have been painting like this. Why are people, there are some set of people that paint in dark backgrounds. Who are they and why did they do that? So I discovered the, the Baroque art era. Yes. There's this era we call the Baroque art, B-A-R-O-Q-U-E. Baroque yeah. art era that, mm -hmm. uh, that spans from the 17th to 18th century. 18th. Yes, that's right. Yeah, the Baroque art era came after the Renaissance art. The Renaissance art era was the time of uh, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and yeah. likes of them. Now, the Baroque era, the Baroque era came after um, the Renaissance, as I said. And yeah. the first person that was I was said to to masterize it was uh, uh, Lorenzo Banini. Yeah, Gian Lorenzo Banini, and artists like that are Peter Paul Ruben, Caravaggio. Rembrandt, the popular mm -hmm. Rembrandt, Diego Valesquez, Nicolas Posen, and many others. So I took my idea from them and I looked at it. Many people are forgetting, are beginning to forget about 
this style of art. Mm -hmm. So I just took my inspiration from there. And myself, talking about the colors and light, I look into it that because the Baroque art era specializes on making, look, making art that have one or two specific plays that makes that noise. Yeah. I like them. Yes. Comes from one particular place. And the light in every Baroque art painting is never specific. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a definite source of light. You can see a painting, light coming this way, coming this way, coming this way. Coming almost but, from all the sides. Yes. But one funny thing is that the about 50% of every subject, 50 to 70% of the subject of every Baroque art is always in darkness. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? If you look at yes. uh, the painting behind me, that's one yeah. of it I'm still working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, I think that series number 14, 15 or 16. Part of the painting is in dark, but the part that has the strong I like, we come out and speak. Unlike the sculpture, sculpture, when you see a sculpture piece, every part of it is speaking to you, is pointing at you. Yeah. When painting, I discover that paintings are naturally flat because they don't have, they are not 3D featured. Kind of so you'll be looking for, yeah, you'll just be looking for where to, you see everything just speaks to you. But when you say Baroque art, it will be dark, calm, and you'll be, you'll be forced to come closer to see, wow, what's, what's in this work? Why is it talking to me? In a dark room, the painting is going to look very dark. But one particular part, with just a small piece of light, one particular part is going to draw you closer to the work. So that was why I chose that idea. I don't like noisy paintings myself. So I, I, that was why I took interest in the Baroque art movement. So how about the colors that you've used to paint? I see a touch of uh, yellow a little bit, or oh, that should be gold. And I'm also able to see uh, blue and red. So what's the secret behind these three colors or four colors? Okay, yeah. Actually, we all know that um, artists, uh, should we say, people say, when God said, let us create man in our own image, he was actually talking to artists. He <laughs> 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 was actually talking to artists. Uh -huh. So when God wanted to create the world, the Bible says that the world was in dark, was in void and darkness. Yeah. And God said, let there be light. So when the light came, the colors came as well. So that was one of the reasons I chose the colors and light. Someone was asking me, why not say light and colors? But I chose, okay, let it be colors and light. Now for the colors, the Pamai colors, if you see, they are Pamai colors, the yellow, blue, and red. Yes. The yellow, blue, and red give birth to every colors in the world. They are the Pamai colors. Mm -hmm. What I mean is that these three colors can never be mixed, can never be gotten with mixture of any other color. Because if you want to get an orange color, you can always mix red and yellow together. You want to mix purple, yeah. blue, and red. You want to mix green, yellow, and blue. Mm -hmm. But there is no two colors in the world that can give you yellow. Neither are there any two colors that can give you blue nor red. So these three colors are the primary colors. I mean, the origin of colors. Okay. They are the major origin of colors. And when you look at it, this painting, these paintings are actually, I'm not trying to say they are uh, biblically motivated. Mm. Yeah. So it don't look and see I'm being religious. I'm just trying to look back to time of creation. Mm -hmm. The dark backgrounds represent the voidness, the yeah. darkness uh -huh. that everyone was. Even when we were in our mother's womb, Everywhere was dark. We couldn't see anything. But we're just trying to come out. When we came out, that was when we see the colors, the beautiful colors, the black, the light and the darkness. Yeah, that's right. Get. Now, every part, every painting in this series has a dark background. And the colors tend to speak. They speak things. They speak beauty. They speak strength. So that is why I chose the three major colors. But if you look in, into these paintings, there are some um, points whereby these colors meet. Like yes. when the yellow and the red eat each other, mm -hmm. it turns out to be orange, which yeah, that, right. you, that you can never, you cannot push aside. 
So it's trying to tell you the interrelationship between these colors. Beauty, yeah, the colors represent beauty on their own. But yet, when they come together, their interrelationship still begets. Yeah, that's beauty. right. They that's blend so fine. And uh, just to go into the details of the images that you've been able to draw, I can see that there is um, an image of humanity, an image of man tied, the mouth is tied, the ears. I mean, there is a kind of a band that goes through the eyes, the, um, the mouth and the ears. What's really a representation of this kind of uh, drawing? Okay. Um, for the things holding them down, those, they are actually ribbons. Um, yeah. Colorful ribbons, blue ribbons, red ribbons, and yellow, and yellow ribbons. So these ribbons, Apart from the colors I introduced myself, these ribbons too are the primary colors, the blue ribbons, the yellow, and the red. Now, these ribbons, yet they look beautiful because of the obstacles we all pass through in life. Every one of us has one or two things holding us down. Mm -hmm. uh, on my Instagram page, I whenever I post a work, whenever I post one of these work, I make sure I write um, some description about the works, what it represents. We all have things that we are going through. Yeah. Psychologically, emotionally, financially. And even after the time of the COVID-19, things are not the same, the new normal and everything. Oh, so right. these obstacles, they look beautiful. There are some obstacles that you can't just be away without. Them. You can't just live without them. And you can't push them away. All you just have to do is to live with them. So those kind of obstacles look beautiful. Okay, mm -hmm. For instance, now you have something good with you, but it's holding you down. You can't push it away. For instance, let's look into the world of technology. Our phones are kind of distraction to us, but yeah. yet we can live with them to make our life a better, to make our lives better. Like now we are communicating right now. It's within the, it's, it's as a result of the internet from our phones and our gadgets. At times, these phones can serve as distraction. They can hinder us from, in fact, they can pull us down. But notwithstanding, if you use them the right way, you get what you want in the right yes. way. Mm -hmm. You get the right result. So these obstacles, they are holding us down. They are pulling you down. They are tightening you down. They will not let you get what you want. But notwithstanding, it makes you struggle to get more, to get out of it. I did a painting. That was a painting of myself. Okay. Uh, that was series number 10, where I was struggling to come out of the, uh, the obstacle. Yeah, my obstacle, everyone mm -hmm. in our life, we have things that are holding us down. We can only live with it. You can't live out, you can't, you can't just get out of it finally. All There's right. a Nigerian singer that says, uh, uh, while I know the finish. It doesn't, while I, trouble doesn't What's get, the of that? never get, uh, the song says, while I know they finish, you, make you try, they enjoy. Uh, kata, kata, I don't know the song, but I know that part. <laughs> what, he's trying to, <laughs> what he's trying to say is that you can never get out of any mess completely. Yes. Or should I say, when you get out of one problem, you will definitely another enter one. another one. Yeah. Definitely. It could be financially, uh, my retali, so anything. But if you say you want to give up, you don't need to give up. You just have to struggle and survive with it. So, you know, yeah. the finish, it doesn't end, but all you just have to do is live with it, um, turn it around for good. A stone that is meant to stop you, you can pick it up and use it as the foundation for your house. Yeah, right. So, that is how it's supposed to be. Uh, let me ask you that. When you compare yourself with other um, artists from uh, let's say Abuja or the entire country in Nigeria. Uh, do you think that there are artists that have thought about uh, engaging themselves in drawing or having this kind of series in paintings? I, I don't think I'm bothered if there are other people that want to do the kind of work I'm doing. That is why I said I, I, I took a cue of my inspiration from the Baroque artist, the Baroque art movement from 17 to 18. Mm. It's what that the, the 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 artists in that time, in the 17th to 18th century, they did they laid a legacy, right? Yes. Which someone like me is following today. So if someone else comes tomorrow and tries to, should I 
say, in quote, copy what I'm doing. I wouldn't get angry with that. That is it. I think I'll, I'm making progress. And but one thing is, it would be nice if um, they can lay, <clears throat> if they can give um, a, give accreditation yes. to me. I can't be the first person, and I can't be the last person. Yeah, that's I get in. But yeah. one thing is, one thing is for sure. If other artists are doing it, fine, it's good. The sky is big enough for everywhere to fly. There's never been any bed that could lie. The birds can never collide in the sky. They will always right. find a way to, to escape eating each other. So I feel if there are other artists, Abuja is big, Nigeria is big, the world is big enough. So if someone comes and start copying my style yeah. and what I'm doing, I wouldn't stop doing what I love doing. And I wouldn't go ahead and confront that such person. It will only make me uh, less of who I am. Okay. All I think I will just do is think of a new way to rejuvenate the work, to regenerate more work. Yeah. All right. So who are you actually uh, targeting when you're carrying out these paintings? The youth, and generally. The youth. Mm -hmm. Because if you see the paintings, they talk about youth, talk about... Um, children, this major two people, this major um, set of people are the strength of the world. Yes, yeah. they're the strength of the world because the youth today are going to be the others tomorrow. The others that we have today were the youth yesterday. So we are living on the legacies they have laid yesterday. And uh, whatever we do today, whatever my art speaks of today, the target audience of today will be the determinant of the survival and the living existence of people tomorrow. So what my paintings are talking about, they're talking about the lifestyle of youth, how they're right. going to survive, so, how uh, to live with it and going. What, what are some of the challenges that you faced when uh, I mean, setting up to start carrying out these drawings or paintings? What are some of the uh, setbacks that you met in the process? Yeah, there are lots of setbacks. There are setbacks, challenges of cost of materials, um, space, canvas, cost of stretchers, time, and most especially, mixture of the colors. It's not that I'm not an artist. I can paint, I can mix colors. But the problem is, you know, the human eyes have millions of pixels. You can look at the color now and um, it's red, but it's not completely red. You just want to mix a different tone of red and, you know, like when I'm mixing my colors, um, my wife, when my wife comes, she's so funny that she'll be asking me, she'll be arguing. With, <laughs> my wife will be arguing with me that, no, this is not red. This yeah. is a different type of red. You know, I will mix about six to different, six to seven different tones of red. Yeah. Six to seven tones of red. Yeah. And mixing these colors, I'm running out of paint in my tube. Yeah. And the cost of two, the paint I use, okay, look at this. I don't know the last interview I talked about the cost of paint. I use Winsor & Newton, Winsor & Newton oil color. Mm -hmm. This paint, when I started uh, painting oil, it used to be 1,750 Naira. Yeah, right. yeah. 1,750 Naira. I remember I buy them in that world in Lagos. But well, now as we speak, this paint is 6,200 Naira. Whoa, that's a lot. Six thousand, really. That's a lot. Quite expensive. Mm -hmm. The cost of pricing, the 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 cost of pricing your work, the cost of materials, cost of paint, cost of. Um, in fact, I need light to work overnight because I love working in the dead of the night when everywhere is quiet. Yeah. When my dogs are not disturbing, my dogs are not barking. I'm just wondering why they have not started barking now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the cost of everything, survival, and most especially when people want to buy your work, they, they price your work as if they want to help you. So how do you, how, how do you manage to overcome all this? I mean, how do you manage to overcome all these challenges, mm. uh, ranging all the materials and all that? And uh, you've just said consistency. How does that really help you? Because let's say uh, if you need finance, then how are you going to get it? Do you sell some art pieces or how do you manage to get these finances so that you're able to support the next art that you're doing? 
they used to say that uh, artists are poor people, but no, I don't think I'm poor. I'm not poor. Um, I do some commission works, which I don't use to post online. I don't make noise with it. So those commissions, the little I get from them, I keep myself fit. Um, in this series, I've been doing this series, I think I'm on number 18, series number 18. And four has been sold already, even because I, I'm, I'm preparing for an, a solo exhibition this year, my mm -hmm. first solo exhibition. So I'm preparing to produce about 20 to 30 pieces of this Colors and Light series, while some will not be displayed to the public view. Those ones are going to be in archive for my children in future, because okay. art appreciates over time. Yeah, so those ones are not going to be for sale. So what I'm trying to say is um, I have a collector who buy from me. Mm -hmm. Someone bought two, another person bought two, at least. I can always get to keep up from it, the perseverance, and uh, not forgetting the fact that I'm an, I am an artist. I must always produce every day. I plan ahead as well, so I don't run out of material and time. All right, that's really amazing. That's really inspiring. Thank you so much, uh, Angelo, for, of course, sharing with us, or rather sharing with me, some of those great insights and what you're doing. Actually, I can say that what you're doing, the work that you're doing is really amazing. And uh, I went through the images that you are able to paint and uh, they look more of, uh, if you see them from a distance, you might think they're just actually printed, generated by using computer. Like it's, not, it's really hard to tell whether they've been painted using, you see the brushes and all that. But I can say that the work you're doing is really amazing and I wish you all the best and also, uh, your upcoming exhibition, I don't know what it really entails, but I just wish you all the best and all that. And um, uh, I think at this time, I'm just going to say thank you so much for joining me. It's really been amazing. But unless you have a parting shot that you'd like to uh, tell all those fellow artists out there in the continent of Africa and far beyond. Yeah, I, I want to see some Nigerian artists out there or artist in the world, even in Kenya, anyone watching this, I want to say, just keep doing it. You don't know who is going to love what you're doing. There's someone out there, a friend of mine would say, a colleague of mine said, for every piece of art, there's a buyer, there's a lover for it. It may take time, it may take long. You may think, ah, who's going to buy it? But one day someone is going to buy it. Because there was a day on my Instagram, I posted a work, and um, a lady commented that she loved the work. And she said, uh, if I'm going to be doing my exhibition, I should please um, make up for the online exhibition because she said she's enjoying my work and she's going to introduce her friend. Yes, yes she was chatting me up from Sri Lanka. I've never been to Sri Lanka and it means I already touched someone's life. Yes. Art is meant to make, art is meant to disturb the peace. The, the, it's meant to disturb... Uh, People that have peace and it's meant to appease those that are disturbed. Are you getting it? Yes. So that is how art is. It is meant to touch someone and um, just keep doing what you love doing. Don't get discouraged. Mr. Charles, if you want to be an artist tomorrow, I'll let you know. Don't get discouraged. You may start <laughs> by drawing tables and chairs. People yeah. will tell you that what are you doing? You're wasting paper, you're wasting time. But one day they are still going to come and give you a round of applause. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much for joining me over here, Angela, all the way from Abuja, Nigeria. It's really been amazing over here talking about uh, what he does in terms of painting and also the series that he's been working on. I think he's really doing an amazing job and uh, becoming an inspiration also to the young artists uh, who are coming up and would like to join the painting industry or family, so to speak. All right. Back to you over there. Uh, I have to say thank you so much also for uh, watching this. Uh, then remember, this is Zonk News, and you can also follow us across all our social media platforms on Facebook at Zonk News 20, and of course on Twitter on Zonk News 20, on Instagram at the same time, Zonk News, and uh, you can follow us and find more or get more details regarding news, regarding more videos that are really educative, and you will find that really interesting. My name is Charles Valero. Till next time, goodbye. <music>